Good evening, and welcome to another episode of BI Voices. It is September 4th, 2012. I'm Emil Henderson III, along with Natalie Nelson Tanhao and Clint Ferris. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend, Labor Day weekend. Sure wonderful Labor Day weekend. Okay, cool. Uh, tonight on our show, we have with us Gerard Gus James II, who is the president of the Fifth Constitutional Convention, and we'll be discussing tonight the issues regarding the Fifth Constitutional Convention, the legislature's passage of a bill to what you've heard me term before as hijacking the authority of the Constitutional Convention, to get a feel for of where we are with that. But before we get there, we're going to talk about at least one hot topic, and the hot topic is the Supervisor of Elections, John Abramson's order, where he finds that um, Alisa Chucky Hansen is eligible to be on the ballot and was properly nominated. It's a six bullet point order and which just, just basically says that the term moral turpitude is not defined in the Revised Organic Act. The term moral turpitude is not defined in the Virgin Islands Code. Uh, pursuant to Title 18, Section 109C, no court in the Virgin Islands has notified the Board of Elections of any conviction resulting in the loss of voting privileges as it relates to Senator Hansen. Fourth, a pursuant to Title 18, Section 263, as amended, the respondent is not debarred from voting. Fifth, on December 22, 2011, the State Court District Board of Elections, by a majority vote, affirmed that the re that respondent, in this case Senator Hansen, was eligible to register and hold office. And finally, six, the respondent, in this case Senator Hansen, presented a valid nomination paper as an independent candidate for the November 6, 2012 general election. And he then finds that it's determined that she has been validly nominated. What and are your so, thoughts? And the soap opera continues. That's all I can say about that one. But it, it's not surprising. I wasn't surprised. I said that was my words. I'm not surprised. It's not surprising. But you know, it just shows you a system that is definitely in need of some overhaul and some policy and some legislative changes. Because this isn't the first time, and I can recall in the in the recent history, you had senators that were that had big tax bill and still allowed to run. And so I, I truly want to know, does the VI um, Board of Elections, do they have some sort of le um, invest, uh, investigative powers? And because if they, how do they go about making sure that a candidate, how do they go about certifying a candidate? Other than just looking at the, the paperwork that a candidate hands well, in. Well, it appears that Mr. Abramson believes that the Board of Elections is his own fiefdom. And so whatever works at the time is what is going to go forward. Um, you know, and you said something a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes ago on the show, where you said, oh, maybe Natalie, remove Senator Hansen yeah. from the issue. And I agree with that. Yeah. We're, we're turning to her. Yeah, remove personal. her completely mm -hmm. and put any face you want right. Correct. or no face Correct. and ask yourself, should somebody who has not paid taxes for 19 years, willfully hasn't done it, and a jury has found that on three occasions you willfully failed to do it. Mm. Should you be able to hold public office? The reason why I think that is that is significant because a jury of your peers sat and listened to this trial. This was not a plea agreement. This was actually a trial. We have a situation here where it makes it appear as if the revised organic act has failed us simply because that's the scapegoat. It's saying it's not defined in the revised organic act, and neither is it um, defined in our. What's the other? The VI code. In the VI code. So basically, we don't have a definition. But I but just think that... But not tell the people. When something isn't in, in, in um, codified, mm -hmm. where do we go <laughs> to look for answers for it? But at this particular point, nobody wanted to go there. Obviously. Well, but the issue is, if it's not in the VI code, if it's not in the Revised Organic Act, you go to case law. Yeah, Correct. But the courts will tell mm -hmm. you what the answer is. There's he no case law in that order. Ah, listen, the thing that's six bullets <laughs> there's no reference to any arguments made on behalf of the complainant or even any arguments made on behalf of the respondent and if i recall it was a two-day hearing a yes. two-day yes. hearing two that so resulted in an order about you know paragraphs here are some things that you can't dispute you cannot dispute that senator hansen had a jury trial mm -hmm. over this issue correct okay? You can't dispute that she was charged with willful failure to file your taxes, right? That's one. You can't dispute that a jury said you are guilty 
on three counts of it correct of willful failure you and willful mind you means intentional, intentional. right yeah. it's not an inadvertent it's not a mistake with a bad it's evil motive but, but but mr abramson is saying that the court never informed the board of election but that is that's interesting that, because but, just yeah. last week he said mm -hmm. that he knew remember this issue was loose and molinar yeah. he said oh i knew that he was convicted so i went to the court to get it to get the information but that's, that's what he up. said the, the court didn't here. send him any information about, about, about well, mr molinar either so so uh, so what else, so is why a, are you trying to the say the courts ordinarily don't do they that don't do it's the public this is a public record the courts don't take and send to specifically you know it's a public one the it's courts just, have no authority so technically are you, so are you trying to say mr abramson and the board didn't exercise due diligence that's exactly, exactly. what i'm saying with, um, with senator hansen yes, exactly that what what is saying. really their obligation <laughs> under the circumstances this was a public trial this was a trial that was open to the entire public and here it is there was a decision mm -hmm. a, a, a jury of her peers made a decision that the entire community uh, had access to including the board of elections sure. so to the court to to be the one to come and tell you well here by the way here is mm -hmm. the jury verdict form to me that is just like but the, but the courts don't do that he's it, basically it saying that no court has notified him that she's lost her voting privileges there's no requirement but, that's, uh, that's, but does the court say that in, uh, is that the job of court to say that she has lost the voting privileges? Isn't that the board of elections? Isn't board that the elections? That did that all did, 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 did all that you can probably get from the court is the general convic Correct. conviction Correct. order and Correct. then that says this person has been convicted of la 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 whatever here's your sentence and then they can restrict our and they the to that, to then they, the right to her correct then the let the legislature the board of elections will then say well okay well this is this mm. and um you've been you're a felon mm. or not or this a criminal turpitude or you're on probation whatever it is and therefore you are not eligible to vote uh, but may i ask a question what is the standard operating procedures when it comes to every every year in terms of someone registering and someone gets in, um, convicted of a crime does the board of elections ask the, um, the, um, the courts or the department of corrections for a list or what or something is that a standard operating procedure i don't know because i don't i don't know if the board of elections even have rules and regulations that they follow because if they did but then the issue regarding moral turpitude should have been a rule of regulation that's already clearly defined but what thing by, the, by the elections board they do follow rules they do follow some rules because well, they have every some. every every two years they make sure to publish in the post office those people who have been taken off of the roads I think for voting. So said, that part they yes. follow. In the front page news, if I if I saw correctly, there was a convicted felon that was just removed from his voting privilege. Right, Mr. Moore. Right. You know. So and, and why is, though? Why was he removed? Because Mr. Okay. Abramson said, mm -hmm. "I knew of his past, past, and I went to the court right. to get the documents." Mm -hmm. okay. You only went to the court to get Santa Hansen's documents. You're saying that they didn't send it to you. Mm. You got to be con in my position. You have to be consistent. Mm. Yeah. Either you want people to send it to you, or you want to go and get them. Mm. And that's the problem I'm having. But the issue goes beyond that because I understand today he also said that the op the opinion issued by Foreign Hodge when he was Attorney General um, doesn't matter anymore because the legislature has amended the statute that says that once you complete your probation, you can immediately then be voted. I get your right to vote again. Wait, wait, hold on. Who said that? Senator. Not Anna. Senator. John uh, John oh, said. so is he the Attorney General? Apparently. So well, here's what happened. You have the you have the section before which says mm. you you have to wait one year after the completion of your probation before you can vote again. Mm -hmm. Last year, July, it appears that the legislature amended that statute to say you don't have to wait anymore. But for okay. Hodge's opinion, which would mean that Senator Hansen's probation ended May 20th, 2012. If we were under the old law, she would have to wait until 2013 before mm -hmm. she'd be eligible to run. But they amended the law that says you don't have to wait a year anymore. So she's now eligible, if she, if any, if she were proper, to file her nomination papers, right? Uh -huh. Here's the problem. The Attorney General's opinion went beyond that, which Attorney General Minnie, Attorney General Vernon Hatch in 1970, whatever year it was. And what he was saying is that the right to vote and the right to hold public office is not synonymous, mm. which basically means you can have your right to vote back, mm. but it doesn't mean that you can hold public office. They're not the same. 
Correct. You see? So it still is, is, is important. No court has changed that. And under the law, an attorney general's opinion is law until the court or the legislature changes it. So, but, you know, that's our hot topic for today. I, I am certain that we're going to be talking about this again. Yes, Trust me. Uh, we may we'll have to talk about it. But I, I just want it yeah. to, be, to be crystal clear that it's not a personal attack by any means on Senator Chucky Hansen. It's not about her personally. This is a situation, like I said before, affects the entire people of the Virgin Islands and our younger generation to come. Yeah. Because I, I, the I, precedence I, that we set is mm -hmm. what is going to be far-reaching. And, 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 you know, once you set a precedence, unless it is overturned, that is basically what we're going to live by. Well, as long as this continues, lawlessness will prevail and, and whatever happened, happens. But we'll be right back with Gerard Lushnick. Good evening and welcome back to VI Voices. We have with us Gerard Lush James II, who is the president of the Fifth Constitutional Convention. Welcome, Mr. James. Thank you very much, Attorney Henderson. It's Thank a pleasure you. for me to be here this evening. Great, and it's a pleasure to have you. We wanted, when we met, to decide you know, what we wanted to have on the show. One of the things we wanted to talk about is this Constitutional Convention. And the issues have been going on about it, because once again, uh, it's back to the forefront. And of course, there's no, there's no secret why. It's election time. Correct. Right. Because as I understand it, this thing has been back for two years now, and this is like the first time that right. we've been having discussions about it again. Not to the fault of the, in my opinion, the, the delegates, but the Senate actually doing nothing. And we're now at a point where they're forcing us, or you all, to get a draft out in 30 days, or else they'll take it over. Tell us a little bit, proceed about where we started with this Constitutional Convention, the fifth Constitutional Convention. Thank you very much. We started in uh, July, of 2007 where we voted in. That was, uh, first of all, let me say it was like a roller coaster ride thus far. We had some highs and we had some lows. The high was being elected as a delegate in July of, of uh, 2007. In October of 2007, the latter part around the 27th, we were then sworn in the same way senators and the governor and lieutenant governor are sworn in. Uh, we did not receive any funding uh, until that December late December of 2007. But prior to that, after being sworn in, we, we had uh, some teleconferences that we were doing via the uh, Port Authority uh, conference room here in St. Croix, as well as the one in St. Thomas, talking to delegates back and forth, trying to get a feeling and find out how they would like to proceed. We knew that we had the mandate, the mandate to really and truly use the Ford Constitution Convention uh, document and bring that forward and just add or tweak a little as to what we felt may be necessary at this point in time, because we have to understand, Ford Constitution Convention was 30 years ago, and they received $1.2 million to work with. Our first allotment was $100,000. We got $50,000 out of that allotment was appropriated by Deborah Gottlieb in the latter part of 2007, December. So we actually started January of 2008 we worked from January of 2008 with the other 50,000 that we got at the latter part of, of January, and we started to hold our sessions and, and uh, move right, right throughout the year. Uh, we were stymied again with funding, which, which is something that should not have been. We received another uh, $100,000, $150,000 that helped us to get back around to the following year of 2009. So, at the beginning of 2009, we started to say, listen, we have to put this thing together because the people voted us and we have a mandate to complete the draft. So we said in January, we'll have that draft completed by May, which we did. We completed by May and we actually turned the documentations over to the governor by May and hit, it was just supposed to be procedural. Governor uh, John DeYoung III just turned the document over to the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Uh, that was not done. The governor vehemently said he would John not. John DeYoung Jr., to be sure. Yes. Yeah. You but, said the third. Just to, just to make sure. I don't, I don't want anybody thinking that you turned it over to his son. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the document, the, 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 the governor did not do his part. 
So then we went and we, we, we seek legal opinion. Uh, we, we hired an attorney, and uh, the attorney is right in front of me. Uh, <laughs> attorney yes. uh, Henderson uh, was out of the firm of uh, Yvette Ross uh, Richards. Edwards. Edwards. Edwards, I'm sorry. And we, we uh, utilized uh, their firm, and uh, we got very good representation. Uh, we did not have any money to, to uh, actually seek legal counsel, but we still went ahead and we did it. Uh, I went ahead and I used some funds from my business to initially do, do the startup, and we did that. And then when we got some monies from the uh, convention, we put another uh, check towards that and we paid. And we were, were lucky enough to have by that December uh, of, of 2009, uh, Judge Donahue had ruled that the governor had to actually turn the documentation over to President Barack Obama, which, which was done. Uh, it was done on the 31st, all year's night, or all year's day, uh, 2009, December. So turning the documentation over now in the first of the new year, 2010, to President Barack Obama. Uh, the president had a window to work with. Uh, everyone had like 60 days uh, for the president to work it, and then it had to go to the Department of uh, Justice, as well as go through the Congress. So it winded its way down, and uh, by the July of 2009, we were able to now get some feedback in terms of getting a resolution back. Now, the resolution, signed resolution was done in July of 2009. We did not receive it until... 2010. I'm sorry, 10. 10 July yeah. 2010. We did, we did not receive that resolution until December of 2010. Nevertheless, in, in uh, 2010, we were also available the opportunity to go to Congress and, and, and uh, actually make presentations. Uh, I took my delegates with me, uh, Dr. Lois Haptis Hassel. I also took uh, uh, Delegate Bert Bryan, Delegate Gerard Emanuel, and we, we proceeded to Washington where we actually did a presentation at the House of Congress. Uh, we did that in the committee of my former colleague, uh, who was Lieutenant Governor when I was, was Lieutenant Governor, Madeline uh, Bordalo of Guam. Right. She's now the Congresswoman of Guam, and she was so, uh, so, so positive in saying, you, "Hey, James, you have to have this Constitution. The Virgin Islands need one, just as well as Guam needs one. We need to put these things in place so we can know what we're working with." Well, we did our presentation. And uh, that was March. And uh, the only way we got there to was from my personal funding that I infused, because we were really stymied in terms of getting the necessary funding. So we were able to, to use my, my funding, and we paid to get everybody up, legal counsel, every, everyone. Uh, our legal counsel, Lisa, Lisa Moorhead, our legal counsel, Lloyd Jordan, our uh, individual who deals with international affairs, which is Dr. Carla Corbin. Uh, all of these individuals were brought to Washington, D.C. to aid us in, in putting our presentation on and to make sure that we were well received by Congress. Uh, I, I also received an opportunity that following May to go in front of the, uh, Senator Bingham's, which is the Energy Committee, and I did a presentation on my own at that particular time. And uh, following uh, October, I did a presentation also at the United Nations on the decolonization uh, aspect of it. But as I said, we had heights and we had lows. And it, it is sad to see where we are today because after we have done all of what I said in Senator Bingham's uh, hearing, he said, well, uh, Mr. President, how much do you think is needed right now to complete the document. Mm -hmm. I said, we need at least about $600,000. He said, well, that's a little too high. Uh, in this committee, we could give approximately 450000 I said, that would be very good. He said, we're going to give you that money. You go back and you have that constitution done. Make sure that you do whatever tweaking because there are nine concerns that you have to work with. Work with that and just have it passed. Have the people vote on it. I said, very good. We found out afterwards that there was some kind of intervention between our Senate President uh, Russell, mm -hmm. the Director of, of uh, the Department of Interior, Babuda, 
and our delegate, uh, delegate Christensen, where they were, they were actually dialoguing without any input from us. And they were making decisions for the people of the Virgin Islands without our input. Now, here, we were actually mandated and elected, just like the senators, mm -hmm. just like the governor and lieutenant governor, to do a task. We started to become more than stymied because we were now being blackmailed, as far as I'm concerned. And in fact, we were actually abusing the people of the Virgin Islands because what they have been doing now is not really doing what is forthright by having things done, by giving us a proper funding. They now started to create problems. So the what problem that they did, yes, sir. Um, is it chairman or president? Um, uh, president, okay. but it's, it's still the same. No problem. Yeah. Uh, president James. Now, it seems like everybody's playing politics with the Constitution. Governor De Young played politics with the Constitution. Oh, Senate, um, Senator, Pres um, Senator Russell, he's out of playing politics. Some of our even charged that you too have been playing politics with the Constitution in terms of 2010. Right after coming back from um, D.C., <coughs> nothing about the Constitution. Election took place. There was nothing to remind the public of how everybody was playing politics with the we Constitution. We didn't have any funding. And, but, and now, but now I'm, I'm hearing a big theme that funding, funding, funding. C what? So couldn't this Constitution be done even without funding? The, the United States Constitution back in 1776 was done without funding. So, so I'm hearing several teams. I, I respect what you're saying, and, and that was done back in 1776, but you wouldn't find that being done now cool. in, in 2012. Mm. Uh, you have to have recorders, you have to have attorneys, you have to have uh, uh, other supporting staff. Those individuals have to be paid. Correct. We have not been given, and I have a letter here, where in January, of, uh, January 10th of 2008, where I wrote the then president of the legislature, O.C. Richards. And I asked him according to Act 688. And the, the section that I, that I was stressing was staffing. Mm -hmm. Because that well, was all part you, of the any, act. Was there anything that precluded the legislature from loaning their recorders, or meaning their transcribers, or loaning their legal counsel's division to assist you all? And, no, and, no, for, uh, no. There, there were it, 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 it would have been really and truly by the, the, the will or, or, or the gesture of the president. Okay. And I must say that uh, at that time, when uh, Senator Richards was was a president, he did afford the opportunity for us. He gave us a little a little office. Okay. He gave us a copier, and he gave us a space to work with. And, and we're thankful. And what did that stop? <laughs> that stopped when when uh, the next uh, election came in, where then uh, Senator Hill. Donna Stop okay. had 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 won, okay. and and he became, and then he was only there for a short time, uh -huh. and then Hill came in. And we tried to do likewise, but Donastar, he did it, let us stay where we were. But after the change was made for the Senate President uh, Lewis Hill, everything was done. The reason why I ask that question, that this is what concerns me about this whole document. <laughs> Everyone, bless you. bless you, everybody seems to have some personal stake and some part mm -hmm. of this document. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get it, then I don't want it to do with it. And if I remember correctly, Senator Hill at one point had said he will never support that document and therefore he isn't doing anything to help or support that document. And I heard him at a Senate floor the other day, and we'll discuss it probably in the next segment, this issue regarding this new bill to remove you all. I heard him say there needs to be this team of lawyers to write this for you all because you all are lawyers and don't know how to write legally. And I thought in my head, hmm, okay, well, None of you in the legislature are lawyers, but you're drafting legislation all day long. And so maybe none of you should be there. We should have legislation that says only lawyers can run to be in the Senate, mm -hmm. which I think is ridiculous. And so I read the document that you all put together. I don't agree with everything that's in the Constitution, the, the draft. I don't expect that you all will create a utopic document. Nobody agrees with everything in the federal Constitution. There are things that some people like, things other people don't like. But they were corrected as a, it's a living document and it corrects as you go along in life. But my thing was, let the people decide it. You don't have to like right. what's in the document, but let the people do it. Do you feel that the legislature's, what's what I'm looking for, inaction to assist you all in completing this document 
um, led to where we are yes, right now. There's no question. And that's why I, when, when the Senate the President came up with this new revision, I said, instead of dealing with the issues at hand, the budget, the $6.9 million that they spent as public funds, as our money, that they have yet to tell us where it is and who spent it, I said, that's the action that you need to be doing. Let us deal with this. We were elected to deal with the Constitution. And I took exemption from Senator Hill when he said, we're not attorneys and everything. We had judge, Judge uh, Moore, he, he mm -hmm. is a delegate, attorney Doug Captaville, mm -hmm. attorney Frank Jackson. We have, we have a slew of attorney, Doug Brady, yeah. uh, Tula Washington. Right. Yeah, they're yeah. all delegates. You know, so for him to say that, and then you have a cross section. You had, you had teachers, you had lay persons, you had businessmen and businesswomen that all comprise of it. You had former senators, former, former uh, lieutenant governor, you had former, former uh, governor. I, I think you had a cross section. And I think the people put us there to do this mandate, and I think it's an insult for us not to be able to complete because of personal uh, agendas. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna take a quick break and come back in the next segment. But when we come back, I want you to, I don't think, I don't know if you really answered it, but I want to answer Clint's question as to, could you all have, I know we need the funding, but could you really have just kind of get together mm -hmm. and do something even without major funding at the time? But I want you to answer that when we come back. When we okay. come back in a moment. Sure. Rolling in three, two, Good evening and welcome back to VI Voices. Um, Sen Sorry, I'm say Senator James. <laughs> Senator. <laughs> President James. What? No, no, no. You want? That's oh, fine. Okay, let me know you're ready. Okay, three. Three, two. Good evening and welcome back. President Chase, when we left off, we had a question on the floor from Clint to you. I'm not going to ask that question this time. The, the, the question you asked, how, could we complete this work or the draft in a, in a shorter time? No, with, with, with limited funding. With, with limited with funding? Zero or no funding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First of all, we were stymied with one thing, mm. which was the number of people that were needed to have a quorum. Mm. It was 21. Mm. Okay, and in order to get things passed, we had to have that vote for 21 individuals. That perplexed us in many ways because we had individuals, we deal with 30 individuals. Now, not all individuals are going to show up to meetings, and we can't mandate that. Mm -hmm. But we had a problem where some people would stay out and play a game, so to speak. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not coming because I don't like what's being discussed and, and they're not doing it my way. Mm -hmm. So we were perplexed with that and then we got that change later on to where we had a majority of 16, mm -hmm. which made it easier. But we still couldn't get it completed. Why? Because we're dealing with 30 different personalities, 30 different individuals who had different mindsets even though we had professional individuals, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. from judges, attorneys, to, to, to lay persons, to PhD, but it's not an easy task. So what are you saying? Are you saying that if there was no money, the people then weren't going to come? Because I, I try to figure out is, if you're dedicated to this process, yes, the legislature hasn't given you any money. Yes, the department of hasn't sent you money. What precluded you all from just saying, okay, let me go someplace, sit down, get together, well, we did. Forward. Okay. We did. Okay. We did that on occasions okay. when we didn't have money, but well, still, Mike, let me ask you we this. weren't able to complete. Let me ask you this, because you know, I heard you several times say you were stimmied, you were stimmied in various, including the financing, but it seems to me that you, the delegates, were your own worst enemy, because the infighting was such that it didn't give an impression to persons look from the outside looking in that you're getting any results because a lot of times if you don't have a core in one way uh, you have a breakdown and a drama and it would to me there was so much drama when you tried to look at what was going on that you lose the essence of what you were trying to accomplish and it may be because you know there were controversial issues or, or you know provisions in the in the document but be that as it may why were you all so quiet for such a long period of time, regardless of whether you got funding, whether you got the assistance, whether you got, you know, um, backlash from, you know, certain senators, whatever, why couldn't you all, as a body, be more proactive to get this done? I wouldn't say they were quiet. Uh, they were individuals, and you have to understand, too, you can't tell a delegate he or she cannot go on a radio station, mm -hmm. he or she cannot write an article, and mm -hmm. 
there were some delegates that were on the radio every day. Right. I, for example, I stayed away from the radio. Mm -hmm. Unless I had something really and truly that was important to disseminate, then I would say. But then that's, it's not a problem because it doesn't show a unified front because delegates are coming from different angles on the radio, like you say, at Dear Legion. And you, as the president or the chair, chairman that's supposed to be in charge of this, pretty much don't have any control over it. So. Well, again, I would say, let's look at the 15 senators. You have a president, but you can't stop or deny any senator from coming on the radio and giving his or her opinion. And basically, it's the same thing. The only thing instead of 15 was 30 of us. Mm -hmm. So it's the same concept, and, and we try to do our best. I mean, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. Do you think it was more difficult because there were so many of you, with 30 of you? No, because we needed to have the quorum, and, and in order to make the quorum, we had some people who were very, very diligent and made every meeting. We had some individuals who probably made, out of all the meetings, four. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they would, would tell us too. I'm a delegate, I can do what I want. If I want to come to meet, I can come. If I don't want to come, I don't have to come. And I don't think that it should have really come to that part because we were all uh, elected to do a job. And if you're elected to do a job, you should fulfill that mandate rather than right. trying to be personal or whatever. Were there not rules and regulations that you Of have course there are rules and regulations. Rules and regulations but, but, that sets forth, you know, certain... But the delegate sets it, speak. just like the senator sets it. And they're not going to set rules or regulations that will be ill mm -hmm. towards them doing anything that they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and basically that's what happened. But we're, we're, we're now at a point where the Senate President took it upon himself to come and usurp our power. And I'm glad that you went there because I wanted to quickly, okay. you know, the constitutional draft is what it is, okay? It's been passed duly by at least 21 of the delegates. It was sent off to Congress and Congress sent a document back, which, and I wanna make sure that the audience is clear on this issue, that the document was sent back with not one concern, because we are only, I only ever hear people talking about that native provision in mm -hmm. documents. That's the only thing that creates an issue. There were nine concerns. There were nine separate concerns, concerns. Um, there. And I just wanna quickly, for the audience to know, one of them was, the absence of an express recognition of United States sovereignty. In other words, you didn't outright say the United States is our sovereign. Even though when I read it, mm -hmm. it's in, it's in it's implied. Implied. It's implied. that that's what it is, but okay, you didn't express say it. it. Yeah. Express that's it. one thing. The other one is the provisions for special elections on the territorial status of the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's one issue. That's the second one. The third one, or concern, should say, the third concern is conferring legal advantages on certain groups defined by place, timing of birth, time of residence, and ancestry. That's the issue, I think, with the native rights. The fourth concern is the residency requirements for certain offices, where you have to be here a certain amount of time before you can run for certain offices. Fifth, provisions guaranteeing legislative representation in certain geographical areas. That is the issue regarding sub-districting, which I personally am against, um, and especially how they had it. Seventh, or sixth is the provisions addressing territorial waters and marine resources, which is an important issue for our fishermen, yeah. mm -hmm. for us to control our territorial waters. Um, seventh is the imprecise language and certain provisions of the Bill of Rights of the proposed Constitution. Eighth, the possible need to repeal certain federal laws if the Constitution, if the proposed Constitution is, is adopted. And ninth, the effect of congressional action or inaction on the proposed constitution. Those are the nine concerns. So there weren't just one right. issue. Mm -hmm. And some of the issues that they have, I think, are good ones. Because we hear our fishermen, you know, complaining all, all the, the time. time. People yes. saying, oh, you can't fish for this. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. We don't have control of our waters like other talk people do. I about that so much, and I'm going to tell you why. When they talk about other issues in terms of nativity, I said, let's forget about nativity. In 1999, Governor Turnbull, along with Delegate Christians, signed a memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. with the State Department. It was Bruce Babbitt was the secretary there, right. where they would take all of the submerged areas around here. We lost a lot of territory, a lot. Mm -hmm. When Bill Clinton, before he exited as president, he signed that into law. That was, as they said, Certain individuals like Bruce Rabbit had a pet peeve, mm -hmm. that was his pet peeve, mm -hmm. to gain back a lot of property that mm -hmm. was surrounded the Virgin Islands. So that, that in, that, in actuality, diminished right. our, our, our oh, territorial rights. And I thought that was so important because, as you indicated, 
fishermen cannot fish the way they used to anymore. And now we're going to have to stop fishing the way we fish and now look about marine farming where we'll be doing inland as they do the tilapia. And that's in the document. Yeah. And, and what, what seemed to really get under my craw with this whole debate that we're having this document is the majority of the people who talk the loudest are the people who haven't read it. Mm -hmm. And I, I need people to read the document and see that there's more to it. There are a lot of good things. But that's in where the this, educational in, process yeah, is going And we, we're on. aware that UVI did a horrible job of educating but UBI people. UVI received a, a half a million dollars yes. to educate and the populace. And educate nobody. But, 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 no, but what is, wasn't it about the, wasn't it about the process and not the document? Was no, it, it was a process. It was, it it was, was trying process. to encourage people so, to, And the document to, wasn't done yet. No, 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 no. It was no. just trying to encourage people no. to they come had enough, out and vote. Let me do it this way. The mandate was to educate on the process. Mm -hmm. Not only about how you create a constitution, no, but no, also no. the importance of voting on no, a constitution, no. the importance of educating people mm -hmm. on the document once it has been completed. Correct. None of that was done. By so, UBI. The, but, but, and and that, I think that UBI needs to account for where $500,000 went because there are too many people say, who have no idea. Who well, says the whole $500,000 was already exhausted? Is that, no, it was not. That? The whole $5,000 was not 500, exhausted. $500,000. We did receive okay. about $50,000 from University of the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. We did. Of their $500,000. Of their $500,000. Okay. Now, that's nice. But my yeah. point is whether it was $500,000 or $50,000. The key was for people to be properly educated on this process. But, and I don't believe that people were properly educated on this process. But let me ask, let me ask a question for you. The person who headed this campaign for UVA, isn't he aspiring for office right yes, now? Yes, for Anza Roach. In the yeah. same, same Absolutely. He's running for yeah. Senator yes. okay. at St. Thomas and John. But it is what it is. It, All yeah. I'm saying is whether you agree, and, and my position is people are not going to agree with everything, and they're not required to. The U.S. Constitution, everybody didn't agree with it, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. But, and know, what you don't like, you change yeah. through legislation, however you <laughs> feel over through the course that you need to do. But there needed to be education on the entire process. And once this document was done, there needed to be education on the document. Right. Not to tell them, oh, you have to agree, but be sure that people could get it if they had questions about it, where they can seek to get answers right. done. So when they're voting, they're not voting on emotion. Well, they're voting on a there, proper There's document. a number of things though, that's going on at the same time. First of all, there is a lack of knowledge of the content of the document mm -hmm. by the general population. Well, that will come by right? education, as, as, as uh, Attorney Henderson and indicated. And those who are out there speaking on the areas that they want to stress on, then to tend to encourage persons who know less because that's what they hear. That's is what that I was indicating and alluding to earlier mm -hmm. when I said we can't prohibit delegates from getting out and speaking. You're right. So no. then now the outcome that you have is a doc which this document is a living document. This document can be changed and, exactly. and, and transformed exactly. as time goes by. Sure. But I think the, 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 the public doesn't have a full understanding and I think because of that, they, ha they are wary of moving forward, although what we have yet. Why do you think they don't have a full understanding? That's a good question. Why do you think they don't have a full understanding? I know the answer in my mind. But why do you think that they don't have a full understanding? Because they have been yet to been educated on the, on the, on the document. Yeah. On the you know what I think? I think that we have allowed people to use this document as a campaign tool. Yeah, and, and, and as a result of using it as a campaign tool, you pick out your snippet sure. and you convince people why this thing shouldn't be here mm -hmm. and I'm allowed at that point to get the votes that I need to get where I need to but, get to. But you see, that's the thing. In 2010, it was used as a campaign tool, mm -hmm. but nobody put that on, on the record. Right. In 2012, we, n we know it's a campaign tool again, and we're making sure that it's on the record and it's counted. But, but President James mentioned something. He mentioned that I implied that the behavior of some of the del delegates was rather irresponsible mm -hmm. because he said that they chose to come to all the meetings, some chose to come to all but so as, much, as many as four meetings. meetings. Correct. No, but so he said that yeah, yeah, there was a lot of people that were maybe not fully involved in the process. Which is true. So how so does this document reflect them or it just does it reflect Listen, a smaller the group? The process it No 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 it does reflect you, when they came to vote at the yeah. end. The yeah. delegates had a lot of in house fighting mm. among themselves. I mean we may not have seen all of it but a good bit of what we saw showed a lack, to me, of unity among the de delegates. But here's why I don't agree with that. In the U.S. Constitution, when they were drafting that, somebody got shot. 
Mm-hmm. Nobody gets shot for them. I mean, when Luckily. they were drafted the U.S. Constitution, somebody was shot because they didn't agree with somebody but, else. But, I mean, it, it's a tense thing when you're trying to create a document to lead an entire area. You know, but it, I think it, 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 amaz- it amazes I think it me. It amazes me when, 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 and and, and not, not, not against you, uh, Attorney Natalie, but you're gonna have people who are gonna dissent and those who are gonna sure. agree. But you have to come to an understanding at, at the end. end. Of the day. And that is what we did. We came to an understanding where we had individuals. I can remember we had we had uh, Senator Bassinger. He wasn't there, but he voted. I mean, it, it, you could have vote via telephone. These individuals voted. They put this document together. Said, we'll accept it, so we can move on. President James, before we run out of time. Yes, let's talk about the seventy seventy six constitution. Use some comparison. The seventy seventy six constitution I read it, and one thing it did. It didn't exclude those persons that were present at that time. There was some level of grandfather clause that was given to all persons who were in the country at that time. But and and then we, I, I didn't see the delegates listening to the wider community and all the issues. They they moved on the individual individualistic approaches because I don't see any concern. Any of my concerns are the people who look like me of their concerns in this present document. And the only thing they're saying is that, okay, don't worry about it. Your progeny will be taken care of. And I think that that is pretty much a consensus how the people feel. And that's why right. they themselves have not done a whole lot to help you, the delegates, well, guess, to well, move this I, I think, first of all, I, I, I look like you. Yeah. And I think your concern and mine are in there. And, and I feel that there's nothing that we'll have that will be a perfect document, as you alluded to earlier. But it's a working uh, uh, document that, that can change as time progresses. The United States Constitution, it changes every day. Who decides what is constitutional and unconstitutional? The courts. They will make that determination. My point here is that we needed to have the proper funding so that we can have this thing voted on. First of all, mm-hmm. the people actually educated on it, then have it voted on. And once it's voted on, whether it's voted up or down, if it's voted up, then we can make the changes. So if it's voted up, then you go back around again. You'll have a six hundred or something. So where do we go from here? Well, let me answer that when we get back because we're running out of time. But we'll be back in another segment. You will answer that. But before you go, I want to say one thing in regards to the comparison you made with seventeen seventy six and grandfathering people in. One set of people that weren't grandfathered in were the people that look like me and you. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's oh, make sure but, that we are clear. But and I'm we weren't we're even whole we're people persons. Correct. We're three fifths of persons. We didn't have the vote and rights yet. We were three fifths of persons. We, fifths of persons. <laughs> we weren't even whole persons. And we were in this con- in that country, and they were creating a whole new country. We're not creating a new country. They were creating a whole new country. So I don't really follow that analogy to the extent they were grandfathered in. But, but we will talk about it when we get back. We also talk about where we're moving forward now with this new le- legislation. We'll be back in a moment. Good evening, and we are back with President James and the panel. And before we left, I'd ask the question, where do we go from here? You know, we know that the legislature has passed legislation to, as I said, hijack the authority of the Fifth Constitutional Convention by creating a revision com- a, revi- a revision commission or convention, mm, convention, whatever they're calling themselves. Um, mm. Where do we go from here Well, we- with that in place if the governor signs the bill into law? Well, I'm hoping that he doesn't sign it. I'm going to send a letter out to the governor tomorrow asking him to veto, veto that legislation that is forwarded from, from the 29th legislature so that it does not usurp our power, nor does it insult us as delegates, neither from those from the first to the fifth Constitution Convention. Because in essence, we're here on their shoulders. We have worked what they have left for us to work with. And I think that in all due respect, we have individuals who have passed away and given the, the, the time, undivided attention to put things together. And I think we owe them that honor and respect to make sure that we can fulfill what they started. President James, yes, then, yes, let's say the governor doesn't sign that bill. We don't, we, then what happens next? Well, we're going to have a problem because uh, I, I got notice today from some individuals we have individuals who are running for office, 
uh, in, in various capacity, and uh, they have asked to have leave of absence until after November. So we will not be going anywhere. Okay. Here's a concern I have with this bill. Is it says if you all all revise everything and get it done in 30 days, the legislature takes it over. I have a major problem with not, that. Not, not necessarily takes it over. If we don't revise it, it means that we're gone. We're, 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 we're just a number. And, and it's like holding a weapon to your head and saying, well, uh, you're going to give it up or not. And it shouldn't be that way. Uh, we, we, we weren't brought into this situation under any type of duress. So why should we try now to provide a second draft when we already created a draft that just needs to be disseminated so people can be educated on it. I think that's what we need to do but and how, give us the funding How are you going that. to address the issues, the nine issues that were uh, set out? Well, the, the, there are nine concerns. Right. Uh, again, the, the, the federal government didn't hold a weapon to our head and said, you have to address these nine concerns. They said there are nine concerns and we would hope that you would address it. If we don't, then we move forward with what it is. So and again, there are areas that can be revised mm -hmm. if it's accepted through uh, uh, amendments, or it can also go to court and can be revised through through uh, court. Well, how would you allay persons who feel like, what have you done, if anything, regarding these concerns? Are you expecting us to just vote? as is? Is that what the expectation is from the delegates? For well, I, I can't speak for all delegates. I can only speak for myself. And, and uh, once we get in, into, into session uh, to reconvene, uh, it will be dependent. Uh, any delegate can stand and make a motion and decide we're going to revise all nine or we're not going to revise. Or we may revise a few and, 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 and leave the others. So it, it all depends on what the body and who attends that meeting will do. What would the calendar look like for you from, from November 2012 going to November 2014? How would you say the calendar will look for the Constitutional Convention in terms of plugging in, when you, what, plugging in various activities of the Constitution from there to the people voting? Tell, tell us how that calendar would look. Uh, from November 2012 to November 2014, uh, that's, that's, that's going to be very interesting because you have an election at that particular time for senators and governor, lieutenant governor. Uh, I am hoping that the convention would have concluded by then and at least have come to some form of, of acceptance. And if not acceptance, at least we would know that we need to revise or make changes so we can move forward again. But. Uh, Having, having funding, and I, I, I know a lot of people talk about that. I use the monies from my business to get us where we are in order for us to go to Washington, D.C., in order for us to take, take the governor to court. And a lot of people look at that as something very, very minor. But at that point, we did not have any funding. And I, and I have to thank uh, Attorney uh, Henderson for working with us because he worked without being paid. On time. Tell him again, please, because yeah, he I need people without to understand. understand. Yeah, and you, <laughs> have, you have to understand that. And, and we're really, we're really, always yeah, we're really no, the reason I say that is not just for me. The reason I say that is because there are people that think that there aren't lawyers in this community who are who would do stuff like that. They just think that there are lawyers in the community who just want to run the place, wanted to make but money. And it's really not fair to say that because when I hear some of the radio people talking about where the lawyers, where the this, where the that, there are lawyers like myself and that is some a lot of other people. Who do that? Who will step in and assist people on one of the systems? And, so and, 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 and I will say Pro that, that, that <laughs> the, the, the firm where <laughs> Attorney Henderson worked for that, that dealt with that uh, on the event Ross Edwards, uh, they actually did their due diligence. I sat here early and I listened to the Board of Election not doing their due diligence. <laughs> well, that firm <laughs> did their due diligence and they got us where we are today to have the document forward it to the president so we could get it back, which we did uh, in, 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 at, at not an appropriate time, but at least we got it back. Well, let me ask you this question, because like I said, I'm looking at this. Do you believe, and really, any of you actually, do you believe that 30 days is sufficient to deal with these concerns yeah. that, that Congress has? I, I just think that it's a bill set up 
specifically to allow you all to fail. Yeah, and that's what Bunchy uh, meant. I, 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 know, know, I, yeah, I know that. I know it's a bill set up for us to fail, and uh, it's sad to see that politics have to take that path. But we have to understand that we have individuals here who are not really and truly ignorant. We have individuals here who are very adept mm -hmm. and astute and can actually do the work. As I said, I am a businessman. They asked me to be the president. I tried my best to do whatever I had to do. I even used my money after being, being, uh, being uh, as I said, co-hosted by some of the other delegates to get where we are. And I thought we were going to really move forward, and then some of the other delegates just sat back and decided, "Well, we're not going to do anything." But and you see, so. I agree with with you, Mr. Mr. James, in terms of say, I'm hoping that um, the, the governor does um, he he veto this sure. bill because, based on your statements, all your delegates won't be present. No, they won't process. because you have because a lot of delegates who are actually well, running for election. Co correct, and so I I don't see nothing taking place with this convention until after November. The only thing that I, I, I would have hoped you to have mentioned is that somewhere between now and 2014, you hope the people get an opportunity to vote on this document, whether it's up or down. Well, I would hope so. Uh, to be honest, that's what I said, I would like to have it completed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But don't you think the longer this bill sits, uh, sits around, the harder it's going to become to convince the people to... Take not necessarily. Exactly. Not if we have the right people in office. Okay. Not necessarily. Okay. No. And the education. And the education. Because I exactly. have found that when, we have lacked when to we educate speak the populace. to certain people who yeah. have ordinarily been against a document, and you explain to them, "What well, did you read it?" Well, no, I know the provision, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you start to explain to them some of the things that are in there. I can see that they have the. Oh, I don't think about it that way. Kind of stuff because people, when they become more educated on certain right. things, then they can at least they may not agree with everything. But they can mm -hmm. kind of get an understanding of how that process exactly. operates. And you'll be really, really surprised to know how many seniors mm -hmm. ask me on a regular basis, when are we going to have our constitution? Mm -hmm. Seniors. We need it. Mm -hmm. Well, I should say senior citizens. Right. We need it. Or it's right. because yeah. we continue to run to Congress. We can't do anything without it. Exactly. Uh, because we, we have to follow the revisor. Exactly. Like and, and we don't need to anymore. And this is our fifth go around, right? It's our fifth. And let me, well, let it me should be the fifth and final. It should be the fifth and final. Yes. Let me ask this because it's a rhetorical question. Nowhere in here does it define moral turpitude, right? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so maybe maybe that should be a not Maybe put it added onto your notes when you go uh, no. <laughs> to do revision. President James, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. I mean, we just really had a wonderful time with you. I think that we've been able to at least start the discussion to get people yeah. educated about it where they can do it where can they go to to look up the document um if they wanted to look at the, the constitutional document for their own review there's a website under the fifth constitutional convention i i would say and, and i'm not scared to say i really and truly well don't get have it to us me, and I'm we'll make sure it's placed on our website and, and, sure. and that's that's another thing that individuals wouldn't say when they are not prepared and I will tell you, I don't have But, but the good thing is you can yeah. Google it. Yes, that's right. You can actually <laughs> you Google, can it Google it and, you'll and find make it sure anyway. we get that. We want to make sure. But we thank you so much for being on the show with us tonight. I think we have done what we want to do here at Voice, which is educate and enlighten people. And I'm sure eventually we'll probably have to have you back oh, yeah. um, to talk about it as the process goes forward. It's not sure, something sure. that we can just I'll end at this time. Um, but we'll be back to wrap up. Back in a moment. Okay. Three, two. And we are back with our final hot topic, which of course is on the constitutional convention. And Clint, you had yeah. a quick concern about it. Yeah, my, my concern is this. I, I do hope that when the constitution reconvenes, that there's some level of revision that takes place. And not revision based on the hot issues. Because I think there are certain things that I've mentioned, like for instance, defining certain things in our constitution and hold our leaders accountable. Like moral to turpitude? The moral turpitude. <laughs> even, Ethics. And even if you uh, if, even if you're found guilty, whatever it's a misdemeanor or felony, they preclude you from seeking elective office. I think some of these things we need, we need to have a higher standard for, for leadership mm -hmm. in the Virgin Islands, and it should probably be defined. I in completely agree, but I can tell you this, I don't believe that giving into that is going to occur in 30 days. I don't think you're going to get through one thing in a 30-day period. But you see, I'm not even thinking about the 30-day period. I'm hoping the governor doesn't. The, right. Does veto the bill, does right. the bill right. and it gives the constitution the convention after November to get its membership together and work on some revisions 
I agree, because I don't think it should t be tied up with the elections. Mm. Let the elections go by, and then give the delegates yeah. a chance to do what they have to do. Honestly, I would like to give you all 18 more months. So 18 more months? No, here's why. That will allow people to come to see the process, process yep. to be educated, educated, to open it up for people if they want to talk about certain things or not yeah. talk about certain things. I would like to give you that I differ with that. I think the people are very adept, and I don't think they need 18 months. Well, I don't think that they're aware. Out. That's my, I don't think that they're probably educated on this process or the document. But they give them some time, because I defined it in four stages. They need to, you know, they want to accept it, then from there they go to the revision, then the education, right. and then they actually put it in before the people. Right. And right. if it takes 12, 12 months will be a better time uh, than, than yeah, 18. No more than that. And that well, that's I mean, I can do 12 months. I just want it to be a sufficient time that allows the general population to be a part of that process. And I think so it should start date and start date. The process should flow. It should go from one one phase to the next to the next continuously instead Correct. of you know breaking up because it makes it very difficult and for we people. Need, we they need. lose interest, they go on to something that it's oh they back again. So you really want some consistency started and know that by but it's nine months, twelve months, we have it all done in phases. That would be my suggestion. And we need money to put this on all the media written. Well what happened to the congressman that said he had four hundred fifty thousand dollars for you? Did you ever get the money? We never got the money. Uh, but, it, but it, it, it dwindled down to 150 after the uh, Senate President Russell well, talked but, to, to... Well, I'm going to ask one thing. Uh, Senator Babuda. If I may ask a favor that if you guys can put the Constitution and ask the legislature to attach it to their page, maybe UVI to their page. Mm -hmm. so it people, can be, yes. Right? I mean, right. that should be there right now. Right. Because UVI should at least have the document That's as part idea. of their... Definitely. Right. Especially You're since right. they got funding for it. Right. Right. Should yeah. 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 But the more areas that you can use to get it out without money is maybe we need to take advantage of. We'll try. We, we, we tried at the beginning. We really tried with our money. And today Teleconferencing. Te technologically savvy today, so you know, we'll just work with what you yeah. have. Well, I think it's extremely important but, uh, um, get it out. that we uh, get the education out. That's my main concern. Correct. I need the population right. to be educated on this stuff. But, so they know what they're voting on. But I do, I do yes. hope people understand right. that to me, I see the document and I tell her it's an operational document mm -hmm. and we need this document to fully operate as a right. government and I think that's where we have so much loopholes mm -hmm. and this being the wild wild west and where people can run, run amok. People yeah. just have to understand it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Nothing is perfect, yeah. you know, but with time yeah. it will really yeah. take us where we need to go. So, so we have like one final hot topic right. <laughs> and that yeah. is Natalie's birthday. <laughs> Natalie's birthday is coming up on Thursday, oh, right? I remember. Yes, on Thursday, and we oh, want to make you. sure that we say happy birthday to you because we won't, we don't tape on Thursday. Oh my goodness! So we want to make sure we say happy birthday to you, and we brought your favorite dessert. <laughs> you guys are too sweet. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, oh from goodness. VI Voices to you and all of the people of the Virgin Islands who are watching and abroad who are watching our show, we say happy birthday to you, Natalie. Well, thank you happy so birthday. Much. Thank you. Thank you. And may you live to see many, many more. Uh, yes. Let's make a wish here. I'm going to make a wish for RTD, TV, VI. Yes. So, enjoy your birthday. Thank you. President James, thank you for coming on to the thank show. You, and it's been another wonderful evening here at VI Voices. And, you know, remember, your voice can make a difference. Good night, everybody. Good night.